So now that our table structure is in place, let's go ahead and insert some data into the database. And let me make this a little bit bigger. And I'm going to start by moving to the bottom after the tables are created. And the basic SQL command that you're going to use to add data to the database is insert. Insert into, and then database name, for example, mg profile. And then optionally, you can put a list of the columns where you're going to be specifying values. So for example, in the profile table, we have five columns, and I may only want to specify some of them. So some of these columns will allow null values. So I may want to create a row in the profile table without specifying all the column values. If I want to do that, I can go ahead and put a comma separated list of the column names that I'm going to be specifying. So let's go user ID, because that's required, and email, because that's required. And then I put the actual values in another comma separated list. So the first value is going to be a numeric 13 wide, which is the user ID. So I'll use one for that. And then email address will be, um, let's say bob at bob.com. So here's an insert statement, but if I execute this, I'm going to get a little problem. So let's execute it and see what happens. So the insert statement conflicted with the foreign key constraint, FK, and then it auto-generated this name for the constraint. Um, the conflict occurred in database sandbox table mg user column user ID. So it says basically this thing here has a foreign key constraint on the mg user table and the column user ID. Um, in other words, I need to create a record in user first and then get the ID here before this is going to work. So let's go ahead and add another insert statement to create a user account. So that's going to be insert into mg user. And then this time I'm going to specify all the columns. And I ended up with user ID, username, password, hash, and salt. I didn't update the ERD, but there's a salt column as well. So I'm going to leave out the list of columns because I'm going to be specifying all of them in order. And then values are, so the first thing that's going to go here is not the user ID because the user ID is auto-generated. It's marked as identity, which means I don't supply a value for that. SQL automatically generates the value. The next one is going to be username. So let's go ahead and make an account for Bob. And then I get a password hash and a salt. And I'm going to be realistic here for a second and do what an application would do. So the first value is going to be a string of 64 hex characters for a password hash. Second value is a string of 64 characters for a salt. And let's look at how an application would actually generate those values. So I'm going to go ahead and pull up a browser window, and I'm going to search for x random number generator. And take one. So I want to generate 64 random bytes, and I want to display them as hexadecimal. And then I'm going to get bytes. And I actually wanted one that didn't have spaces in it. So let me go ahead and pick a different one here. Let's try this random hex number generator. And I want 64 of them. Oh, and this will let me generate multiples. I think that's good. I'll go ahead and generate multiples because I'm going to need multiples. So basically, I'm going to grab this first randomly generated number. And that's going to be my salt for this account. And every time I change the password or update this information, I'm going to generate a brand new random salt. 
And then the other thing I need is let's use SHA-256. Generator. So here's a 256 hash generator online. And the user is going to supply me with a password. So let's use the most common password, which is, believe it or not, password. So there's the password. And then to make this a little more cryptographically secure, what we're usually going to do is we're going to concatenate the random salt with that. So this is the effective password. And this is, as you can understand, amazingly difficult to guess. So here's the 64 bytes of uh, SHA-256 in hex format. And I'm going to copy that. And so that's my password hash. So if I go ahead and execute this statement, it goes through, I have a row in my database. And then if I do select star from mg user i see this new row here so the user id is one that was automatically generated i have a username i have a password hash and a salt and so now i can use this user id one in my insert for mg profile and that time it works correctly so I can also write a statement like select star from mg user join mg profile on mg user dot user id e equals mg profile dot user id. And if I execute that, there's my data. So you'll notice for the column values, I didn't specify. They were allowed to be null, and so I got null values there. Um, this is the stuff from MG Profile where I just specified ID and email. Now, if I wanted to create a second user, let's go ahead and do that. Um, so I'm going to go and get the next hash. That's going to be insert into MG user values and I'm, I'm going to create an account for Alice and I need to calculate the password hash for the salt I'll go ahead and pick just the second randomly generated salt out of this list and then for the hash Coincidentally, Alice used the same password as Bob did, but I have a different random salt, and so I end up with a different password hash. And that's the reason that password hashes are mostly going to be distinct. So here's my second user, and then I'm also going to add a profile, but this time I'm just going to specify a user ID. And I'm going to guess that Alice is going to be row two. So let's go ahead and create the account for Alice. Oh, and uh, I didn't select the right values, so there we go. So there's the account for Alice. And now if I do this insert, I'm actually should get an error. Yeah, so I cannot insert the value null into column email. Table MG profile column does not allow nulls insert fail. So that one should be self-explanatory in this profile column. I'm sorry, in this profile table up here for the email column, I specified unique. And so that integrity constraint is enforced when I try to insert a row into the table that doesn't have a value specified for email. So let's go ahead and add an email address. So Alice is also at bob.com. And execute that. And now, oh, and there are fewer columns in the insert statement. So I have to add email here as well. 
Good, so now I have two values being specified into two columns, and it works. So now if I run the select statement again, I should have two rows, and I do. And you'll notice that the password hashes are different, completely different, even though the users use the same password. So let's do one more user, and I'm going to insert into ng user, and I'm going to use Charlie, and then I need a hash and a salt. So for the salt, I'm going to go ahead and grab the third random value. And then for the hash, let's use this is a secure password. Close enough. And then the salt after that. And then I'm going to copy this password hash. and paste it in. So there's my user. And this time I'm going to create a profile that has all the values. And that's going to include a user ID and a first name and a last name and an email. And when you're Putting in a list of columns, it doesn't really matter which order you specify them. It's just the values have to match the order specified here. And I think I'm forgetting one column, so let me take a look again. So first name, last name, email, and home page. So we'll do, this time I'm just going to put the home page first just to demonstrate. And values. So the first thing is the user ID, which is probably going to be three, but keeping track of these IDs is a little bit of a pain. Um, so one of the things that SQL will allow you to do is to fetch the ID that was created by the last ins identity. So when I did this insert into, since the user ID column was generated using identity, the value that it generated is saved, and I can actually refer to that in the next query. The way I get that is with a function called scope identity. So if I want to specify the ID here, user ID to be whatever the ID was in this previous row, I can say scope identity, and this is going to return whatever value is used, and then I can just pass that in. So I'm going to go ahead and do that here. And then for the home page, we'll do tilde in there. So there's a home page. And first name is going to be Charlie. And then last name is Jones. And then email address is charlie at bob.com. Great. So let me go ahead and execute these two lines. And then I'm going to run my select statement again. Let's move it to the bottom, actually. And then execute my select statement. Great. So that seems to work correctly. So I should be able to run all of these statements from scratch. I'm going to hit execute, and that's going to completely rebuild my database. And I see at the end, my select statement is returning the right values.